Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I will be talking about the time running Panamonium event or also called the WO Mr. Panera Remix. And I will explain what are some of the best classes you can pick in a row to enjoy this new time limited event as much as possible. So before I start diving into today's video, I want to stress that it's not as important as for instance in classic or retail WO simply because of a few things. First of all, you need to remember that during this specific mode, you will be able to unlock different types of gems that will allow you to use powerful abilities and talents. And in some cases, you will even be able to borrow some talents and abilities from other classes. So it means that while, of course, the choice of your class will have an impact on all the different abilities you will be able to use, you will still be able to use all these other extra powers and talents in order to customize your character. And in general, the most OP ones will probably be available for any class. So in that sense, it's not as important as for instance in Classic WoW or Retail WoW. Then next to that, it's also very important to remember that in this mode, you will be able to purchase and learn all the different rewards for any class on your character. So it means that for instance, if you're playing on a mage, you will still be able to learn all the different plate, mail, and lever appearances. And then you will be able to use these different appearances in the retail version of the game. And so this is something that will even work, for instance, for the specific uh, three pieces sets for each class. And you will, for instance, be able to buy all of them on one character, and then you will be able to use them on all your different characters on the retail version of the game. So in that sense, you don't need to target one specific class because you want one specific set or an item that is limited to this class. Finally, the last thing I want to insist on is the fact that during this mode, it will be very easy to level up fast. And especially as soon as you will reach level 70, you will be able to create some alts and level them up very, very fast. So in that sense, don't panic if, for instance, you realize that the class you picked at the beginning is not as OP as you thought for some of the different activities you want to do in the game. You will still be able to create over alts and normally you will be able to level them up super, super fast. So let's start with the first criteria in order to determine which class you want to pick in this new mode. I think one important thing to consider when you're choosing a class is the fact that these different characters that you will create in the Time Running Pandemonium event will also be transformed into regular retail war characters at the end of the event. So it means that, for instance, if you want to maybe level up specific classes for Season 4 of Dragonflight or for different type of activities in Dragonflight, or even for the War Within, because right now we know, for instance, different hero talents, and you have one class that you think is going to be very interesting, but you don't have a level 70 yet, then you can just use this character to do all the different activities, and then you will be able to get it as a level 70 in Retail WoW. So like that, if there are a few classes that, again, you're missing for different type of activities, let's say, for instance, you want to start farming gold and you know that Druids or Rogues are some of the best classes, you can easily create one, level it up through this time limited event to 70, and then you will have this character as a normal character at the end of the event. So this is something that I think is very important to keep in mind and to consider because, again, it can be a huge advantage and especially it can be useful for the war within and beyond. Another thing you can consider is whether you want to learn to play a new class because this is a really good time to do so. So let's say, for instance, you've never played Warlocks, but you really want to try. Then you can create a Warlock and like that, you will be able to explore this new mode with a Warlock and you will be able to learn all the different abilities, talents, and who knows, if you really like it, it will maybe become your main or one of your main alts later on in the retail version of the game. So I think, again, this is a really good opportunity to do all these type of things and something you need to consider when choosing your class. Now, another very important thing to consider is the fact that in order to get most of the different rewards from this event, you will need to farm a lot of the new currency, bronze. And so far, we know that you will be able to get this currency by completing different type of activities, but also by killing random mobs. 
And so most likely what's going to happen is that you will need to kill a lot of mobs in open areas in order to get all these different bronze as soon as possible. So here I would recommend you if again this is one of your main objectives to get all these different rewards as soon as possible. You will need to have a class that can do a lot of AoE damage and also hopefully that can just kill a huge amount of mobs by itself. So for instance here, I would say that uh, a druid would be a really good choice because with druids you can either tank heal yourself and you can also do a lot of AoE damage, for instance when you're using Munkin. So a druid would really allow you to probably farm all these different bronze from random mobs super super fast. And keep in mind a lot of groups are probably going to be formed for people to farm all these different bronze together. And in many cases, people will ask you to probably be a druid in order to make it as easy as possible to tag mobs and then kill them. Then, of course, you have mages. Mages are extremely good, especially for solo farming. So here you will be able to really grow a big pack of mobs and then kill all of them. So this is definitely something that could allow you to farm this bronze very easily on your own, but also as part of a group. Then of course you have other good classes like Warlocks, especially Demonology Warlocks. I think right now they're really good and they can do a lot of AoE damage. Same for instance with Demon Hunters, same with Evokers. So really try to get a class that can really do a lot of AoE damage. So then you will be able to farm all these mobs and get bronze as fast as possible. Of course, as I mentioned, any tank class can be interesting because again, you will be able to kill all the different mobs without dying and you will be able to aggro a huge, huge amount of mobs at the same time. So this is something that can be very good, especially for solo farming. And I would say any of the tanks would be good, but especially Druid, Demon Hunters, and of course, um, Warrior are going to be probably the best. I also want to mention monks because monks can spawn the statue that will aggro all the different mobs around. And this is something that again is being used a lot when people are doing these different group farms. And in many cases, people are asking for at least one monk to join the group. And so if you have a monk, you will most likely be able to join all these different groups and farm bronze very fast. Then of course you can use any class really to farm bronze and you know to like kill mobs and do all these different type of farms. But if really your only goal or your main objective is to get all the different rewards, you want to make sure to have a class that can do a lot of AoE damage and that can also either be part of other groups or solo discontent. And like that you will get all the bronze you need. Now, another important thing to keep in mind is that you will need to do a lot of different type of achievements. You will need to do a lot of different type of activities. And in general, I would say if you are able to do that uh, solo, it can always be a good thing. So here again, I would recommend you maybe to try and have a character that can switch from DPS to tanks because tanks are really good for that or healers, of course, when you're able to heal yourself a lot and still make some damage, it's good. So here again, for instance, a druid is gonna be very, very useful. Same with a warrior, same with a paladin. And I think this is definitely something important to keep in mind because even though a lot of people are gonna play this mode, if at some point you don't find anyone to do some of the different things you need to do in the game, for instance, kill bosses or do different type of quest lines that requires a few people, if you can solo this content when no one else is around and available, then this is a really important thing to keep in mind. So I would recommend you to also consider that when choosing your class. And of course, any class that has a lot of auto healing is also really, really good. So again, Druids are going to be good, maybe Evokers, maybe Paladins and Warriors, also Demon Hunters. You have like a lot of overclasses that can be good for that, but these are probably my top ones, I would say. And even Warlock, because you can always summon a tank pet and then try to solo all this content by yourself. In terms of classes, the last thing that I think is important for you to keep in mind is that they will have a lot of, for instance, PvE activities. You will be able to do all the different raids in normal heroic modes. And I think if you can play a class that can be useful to the raid, so for instance, any class that can switch from tank to healing to DPS, you will have more chance at being invited and at doing all these different things. 
So again, this is something that I think is important to consider when you're choosing your class. If you're, for instance, going for mage, you know you will only be able to do DPS. And so if you want to do some PvE content at some point, maybe it will be a little bit more difficult for you to get an invitation. When, for instance, if again you're choosing, let's say, a Druid or a Demon Hunter or a Paladin, you might be able to get an invitation a little bit faster simply because you can switch from any of the different roles and accommodate what they need at that moment. Now I want to talk briefly about what could be some of the best races that you should consider when creating your character. The first thing that is important to remember is that it has been confirmed that your time runner character will be eligible to do the different quests in order to get the heritage armors for all the different allied races when you hit level 50. So if you're missing some of the different heritage armor sets and mounts and all the other rewards, then you can easily just target the different races that you know you want the rewards from. And then when you will hit level 50, you will be able to then do the quest and get all these different cool rewards. So I think this is something very important to consider again when you're creating your character. And then of course, another obvious reason to pick a specific race is if you want to leave the fantasy, maybe you want to create a panda because like that, you will be able to feel very immersed in the Mist of Pandaria world and in this universe. And this is something that I think a lot of people will enjoy doing. Especially, it's important to remember that you will be able to get a lot of really, really nice uh, rewards that will be Pandaria themed and like that you can really live your full fantasy when creating this character and playing this time limited event. So just something that I want to point out here because also sometimes the best choice is not the most logical one or the one that makes the most sense in terms of, uh, you know, like productivity and what's going to be the best class to farm things in the game. Maybe sometimes it's just how you feel about it and what you want to do in the game. And if it's just having a good fantasy with this new mode, then maybe choosing a panda would be a good decision. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Again, I really want to insist on the fact that while it makes sense to try and choose a specific class and a specific race when creating your characters, it's not as important as in retail and classic world. You will definitely be able to still enjoy everything during this event, probably in almost the same way. And also, if at some point you feel you need to create something else, you will be able to level up another character very fast. So that's pretty much it. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos. And in the meantime, I wish you all a great day. Bye.